Hey everyone, excited to be back for this week's edition of Frequently Asked Questions for Commercial Real Estate. In today's video, what I thought I'd do is talk about a question that I often get asked from my clients, and that is, how do you properly assess the value of owner-occupied real estate? Now, there's a strong distinction between owner-occupied real estate and in, in invest in investment real estate or income-producing real estate in that owner-occupied real estate does not produce income. There's generally speaking, a business owner is going to occupy that space for their business use, so that building itself does not produce income. So the value Asian method that's used in order to assess the value of that building is going to be what's known as the comparable approach. Now, this is actually commonly used in residential real estate, but what it is is that you look at buildings in the area that have a similar use and size and other metrics, and then you compare them to the subject property to come to a high level determination. Now, I'm not an appraiser, so before we dive into this video, I want to make, I want to stress that this is not going to replace getting an actual appraisal of your property. However, if you're analyzing opportunities in the marketplace, it does give you a pretty high level understanding of what a property may be worth given other offerings in the area and what they've sold for in the past. So now that we understand what the comparable approach is, let's dive in to determine how you're gonna actually make that valuation of that owner occupied building. So to start off, what I recommend doing is to look at comparable sales in the past. Uh, one of the best ways to do this is look to, to your local commercial MLS. Uh, here in Louisville, Kentucky, our local MLS is kcrea.com. That's where most commercial agents post their commercial listings. Uh, in, in that case, what you would do is you go to that website and try to search with the, the advanced criteria to, to determine, okay, well, let's say you have a 3,000 square foot retail building that you want to compare. You type in those criteria in the search bar, do a search, and then find comparable sales in the past that align with what your particular retail or the, your building use is. Along with that, there's some national sites, including LoopNet and Crexy that you can search uh, that also provide you with other options to be able to pull comparables from. Now, when you're looking for comparable properties to assess, you have to make sure that there's a few things that are in line. Number one, they should be geographically close to one another. So what I usually do is I don't, I make my radius no more than maybe five to seven miles away because once you start getting outside of that range, especially here in Louisville, it's a completely different market. So it may be different in your city, but you just want to make sure that they're relatively close to one another so you can provide an accurate assessment of what that building property could be worth. Along with that, you want to make sure that it's a similar, similar use. So for example, a 3,000 square foot industrial building is going to have a completely different worth or value than a 3,000 square foot retail building. So making sure that they're utilized for the same purpose also helps determine an accurate value of that building. And then finally, once you have a few buildings to be able to compare to, this is where the art of, of assessing property value comes into play. You're going to add or subtract from the value based on a variety of different metrics, um, primarily related to condition of the building, the size, geographic location, age of the building, amenities, etc. So as an example, let's say that you find three buildings that are comparable buildings in the area. The average of these buildings are roughly $150 a square foot. Now, if you would look at your subject property and say, okay, based on these three buildings that, that, that we've been able to assess their, their value because they've sold in the last six months, for example, what's my building worth? So you would say, okay, Maybe the condition of my building is better than these buildings. Maybe the size is a little bit larger. Maybe the age is a lot newer. So instead of maybe $150 net worth or $50 a square foot in price or value, your building may be worth $160 or $170 a square foot. And again, this is an art, not a science. And so that's, that's how we usually determine whether or not to pursue an opportunity uh, by performing this analysis. So that let's say that uh, a property is being listed at $140 a square foot, but after we, we do a comparable analysis, we determine that it's probably closer to $170 a square foot. That's a unique opportunity for you to capitalize on in the marketplace. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it provided value to you as you go about your search for commercial investment property or, or commercial property that you can purchase for your business use. If you're in the market to do so, especially in the Louisville and, Louisville and surrounding areas, feel free to reach out to me. My number's uh, my, my email is rafael at or you can call me or text me via my phone number at 502-536-7315. Along with that, if you like this channel, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I love providing awesome and engaging content related to commercial real estate. So 
Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.